morning youtubers on today's episode we are going to be doing stick welding in the horizontal position so my previous videos i covered like the flat position haven't done any overhead yet haven't done any vertical up but we gotta we gotta bite off as much as we can chew so we need to get up to the point to where we can do the overhead and vertical up and this is a great place to start honing our skills on something a little bit more difficult than the flat position. So for today's video, we will be using 6013. And I know a lot of you guys out there, as I've said in all my previous videos, you're not a big fan of the 6013 and I get it. But I know that anyone out there with a stick welder, be it a AC buzz box or a high-end DC Miller machine, doesn't matter. All of us can all weld with 6013 on any machine, any polarity. So that's why I'm doing this, is that we can all start somewhere, and I know that this is applicable to what you're trying to do for learning. So anyways, I have uh, a previously used test plate here. You probably remember it from the previous videos where I ran um, just flat beads in a flat position with 6013 overlapping. If you didn't watch that video or any of my other previous how to stick weld videos, trust me, start on those first, then come back here. Because if you're trying to watch this to learn how to stick weld, well, you're gonna you're gonna be a little lost because a lot of these, uh, a lot of stuff I'm gonna be doing, I'm not gonna explain a lot about it simply because it's all been explained on previous videos. So start on those, come back here. Trust me, you'll, you'll learn a lot. Anyways, let's get into it. So here we have our test plate from a previous video. We're gonna be practicing on this first to be doing our horizontal welds, okay? Now, if you're just starting out on horizontal welds, it may help for you to take your scrap plate, run a single pass on it, I don't know, near the bottom or maybe halfway up, run a single pass and that will give you a ledge to weld to. What you're gonna find is when you're first learning to do this in the horizontal position, if your arc gap isn't correct, if your travel speed is too fast or too slow and you have issues with consistency, you're gonna have a tough time just running a single pass like up here in Never Never Land where you don't have a ledge to put it on. So it's for just practice purposes for right now, it's all right if you start off on a bead that you welded in the flat position. You got to get good though without welding on one, but again. Now for rod angle with this, I've seen guys go straight in like this, which the camera angle kind of shows it as an angle, but trust me, it's a straight in. Straight in might work if you have a ledge. Be it you're doing a lap weld in the horizontal position and you have a ledge, or if your bead like this bead's pretty big and you weld on it, you could probably get away with it. If you try and do a horizontal weld like this up here, it's probably gonna be too liquidy and fall down or you're not gonna be able to see your molten puddle. So generally speaking, you want a bit of an upward push angle plus your drag angle. So a 6013, this rod in particular, seems to like a fairly decent drag angle, but you, you wanna push it upwards. That way the arc force of the rod wets that molten puddle and pushes it up a little bit. That'll help keep it from sagging down and then solidify in like a, you know, too low of a position where it's starting to run and it beads up and you get the idea. This will also, in a roundabout way, teach you to do overhead head welding. If you're doing like a fillet weld overhead, which I'll just put this up here and simulate that, you're also going to have a push angle up, but if you're really good at welding in the horizontal position, you're going to find that it's not that much different doing overhead welding than the horizontal position. Now, 6013 is not the easiest rod to weld overhead or vertical up for that matter, but it's doable. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run one pass here right on top of uh, this and then I'm going to run another pass a little bit up to show you both uh, welding on top of a bead and then on its own. And then after that, we'll get into some actual arc shots so you can see what I'm talking about. Well, mistakes are made. 
I clicked take a picture instead of actually film me welding two uh, beads here. So, oops, that's all right. I got plenty more arc footage coming up. So you're probably laughing at me a little bit and I don't blame you. Up here, I started up here and I was kind of guessing as to what was straight based on I knew this was crooked. Well, clearly I overcompensated a little bit and once I got here, I knew I was going far too crooked. So I kind of just cut out of it, restarted the rod, saw where my position was and then went straight. And you know what, this is gonna be very common to what you're gonna experience. What I should have done is scribed a line across here to weld to and I would have solved all my issues with that. The other thing I should have done, you probably saw when I restarted over here, I brought my hand down on the table. Now, I was just kind of freehanding it out here, which didn't help at all, especially with being steady. What I find is doing horizontal works a lot easier if I put my hand here, hold the stinger with my other hand, and just stabilize my whole body and just kind of, I guess the best way I could describe it is like you pull a bow back on a bow and arrow. Well, if your whole body's steady and then you slowly just feed that your dominant hand in what you hold with the stinger really helps keep it stable so especially for vertical up welding huge to be able to do that had i just been you know positioned better would have been a lot better anyways I'm not making excuses just giving you some tips how to solve this now since i did two passes you can see clearly it's possible to weld in a horizontal position uh, without any issue of having a drip if your amperage is correct. Now, I probably didn't mention, I'm using 6013 332 nd rods, just because I haven't run many of these and I got a whole half a thing over there full of them. Uh, this was done at 80 amps, so both passes. A little bit on the cold side, I would have to say. I prefer running eighth inch rods to these guys for 6013. So it's a little bit different. These don't deposit very much metal. You have to go kind of slow to get the deposition rate that you really want. So anyways, I'm going to reposition the camera and I'm actually just going to fill this in all the way to here with multiple passes in order to get this flushed out to where we don't have this. And then I'm going to come back and run a pass here to straighten it to where we now have a straight line across here. And I'll do it with all three 30 second rods, I think and then I'll let it cool and we'll switch to eighth. So this footage isn't the clearest, don't worry. The next bunch of arc shots are much clearer. I figured out a way to uh, improve the clarity drastically. But anyways, you can see my travel speed's pretty slow. I got an upward push angle on it. I'm just kind of feeding it in, letting it fill. Again, the arc shots after this one are going to be much more clear. You can see the molten puddle. It's a little bit tough to see, but it's about twice the size of the rod. And I'm just slowly dragging that puddle. If the puddle lengthens, I'm moving a little bit faster or pushing more rod. If it shortens, I'm slowing down. The clarity of this is very clear. If it's not as clear on your end as it is as I'm watching this editing it, make sure that you up your resolution and your settings on YouTube so you can really see this. But that molten puddle, I'm just dragging it along. It's a pretty defined puddle in this image. So again, I'm just dragging that molten puddle. The 6013 has more or less a shape of an oval. And by slowly dragging that along and letting the rod fill, I'm depositing the weld. 
So as you saw in those arc shots, um, the rod angle is not going straight in. This is straight in. It's at a slight upward push angle, and I'm still dragging it. Now, you saw I was kind of inconsistent. My travel speed wasn't that smooth. Working around a camera is pretty tough. But even though I was fairly inconsistent, this overlapping bead on plate, if I buffed it off, pretty decent. I filled it out. The lines were going all crooked. And this is practice, just like you're going to be doing. So make sure that if you do like I did, where you weld it at an angle and it's all messed up, go back and fill it in and then run a pass over the top in order to clean it up. So I'm going to switch over to eighth inch 6013. I think the puddle will be a little bit easier to see since it's going to be bigger. These little 332s don't make much of a puddle, so it's a little difficult or more difficult to see, I guess. So let me switch over to eighth inch. I'm going to run a pass without the lens on the camera, and then I'm going to run one with it. Just so you can see like my hand position and rod angle and everything, it'll make a little bit more sense. A little smoky in here, I'll have to turn the air, air handler unit on after this. So let's just watch this arc footage and I'll replay it in a little bit and comment. This is probably the best arc shot I've caught so far. The molten puddle ends about double the rod width away from where the rod is. You can see that edge there that is bubbling and then there's nothing behind it. That's the edge of the molten puddle. And you can see I'm just dragging it along to where it stays equal in width and height. Well, as you saw, two passes of uh, eighth inch rod brought it right back up to where everything's going straight. Um, I generally prefer eighth inch rod on anything this thick. You just, it deposits more metal. It's a little easier to control as long as your amperage is within a range of what it should be. But we are now fairly close to straight with the top edge. Everything's looking a lot better. Everything's padded. And as you saw in that arc shot, the travel speed is pretty slow, drag angle, upward push, that's what you want. And then you can deposit welds just like this. Hopefully this uh, helps some of you guys out. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, you know where to leave them. But I had a lot of fun making this video because it's 
a little bit easier. Like some of the other videos are a lot harder to make more time consuming, but this one was fun. I got to take a, a little bit easier. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.